We're back for part two of our Worth It Taiwan series. Today, we're doing soup. Taiwan style. It's amazing because it's so hot in Taiwan and yet they love their soup here. It's eaten for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So many great dishes to try. But before we get there, Steven, where are we? We are here at the Jingzai Jiao Tile Paved Salt Fields. Is that right, Inka? Jingzai Jiao. Historically, one of the earliest salt producing areas of Taiwan. Ocean water comes in, the sun evaporates it, and you're left with salt. Speaking of salty liquids. Sweat? No. Oh. We're doing soup. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three Taiwanese soups at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. It's so windy. The typhoon just passed. So we're heading a little bit north of the city of Tainan to where, Inka? We're going to Jiayi to have some fish soup at Lin Chongming Yu Tang. Lin is my last name. And Chongming is smart. So we're just going to like the smart version of me oh, wow. fish place. That'll be an extra special treat. <laughs> Taiwan is very hot. Yes. Soup is a very hot food. Why do Taiwanese people love soup so much? What kind of fish is in this soup? We mostly use a small fish and a fish. The fish is a Taiwan fish. The fish is from the foreign fish. This is also a lot of fish. Our fish is mostly used to use a fish and a fish. From the morning to the morning, we will eat it from the morning. 大概九点的时间关火，我们啊一边就是准备我们的食材，大白菜、蒜头、洋葱、青葱、飞机改豆腐。再来，我们把每只鱼呢，我们都切成有鱼头的部分，有鱼身的部分，然后下去做油炸。Why is the fish fried and then added afterwards? 在早期台湾那个年代。其实没有冰箱，没有什么冷冻库可以保存鱼。那我爷爷就是选择把鱼油炸以后，让水分减少，加上把它放入菜肴里面入味以后，还可以吸附汤汁。I noticed that customers can come back with their bowls and get more broth. 在我们店里面，这是一个传统，希望它当成是自己的家人一样，在家里就是要吃饱。基本上，其实也是因为有这么多的顾客支持，我们才能一次煮那么大锅，就有点像绵绵不绝的汤，才能大家一起 share。哦，哦，耶，谢谢。What's the plate for? The for the fish bone. Oh, oh. fish bone. Is this your beer? Yes, it's my fish beer. Oh. Cheers, Stephen. Look at that logo. Fish soup. Beer. I'm blown away. Cheers in Mandarin is gambe. Is that right? Gambe. Okay, that was very unexpected. Wow, again. Wow, a thousand times. Very refreshing. Oh, it is. Give me one word. Wow. So this is the marquee piece right here. I'm just gonna bite into this. Mmm. This is like a dish that dares you to want something else. You want vegetables? Boom, we got it. You want tofu? Forget about it. You want pork? We got it right here. You want fish? Boom. Fry it? We can do it. <laughs> yeah. When she was listing ingredients, it was just like the NBA All-Star game. And here we have the tofu. Next up, cabbage. Y'all ready for this? Now, especially our Jiayi, the biggest difference is the beef soup. So many customers come to our store to avoid the beef soup and the beef soup. Turkey rice. I love how this soup with all of this stuff, they were like, nah, you still need some turkey rice. That's right. If there's one thing we learned here in Taiwan, you cannot leave a restaurant hungry. They will assault you with food in the most lovingly way possible. Yeah. Mmm. It's just turkey meat and fat on a bowl of rice. It's great. If you weren't an adventurous eater, this would seem like a scary bowl of food. Mm. But it all just kind of blends into this big soft hug. I don't know. It tastes nice. Dude, it's a kind taste. That's exactly how you say it in Mandarin, though. Good, really? Good eat, right? Good taste. Haotsu. Yeah. Haotsu means good eat, good taste, yeah. Let's spread the kindness. Once I finish this meal, it will be so long until I get to eat this again. And that makes me sad. I know. This whole trip is actually just... It's sad. The worst. 
谢谢。That soup was incredible. In the rainbow of soup to stew, this was somewhere in the middle and like the stoop, stoop there section. There it is. Yeah. So before we get to our next soup, we decided to get some treats at the Garden Night Market in this Tainan. This is my favorite treat at the night market. It is a peanut roll with ice cream and cilantro. What? Cilantro in a dessert? I guess it makes sense. We put mint in desserts and that's just oh, another green leaf. Think of that. Cheers. Cheers. Huh? 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 Oh. I like dessert cilantro. So our next soup is actually going to be hot pot. Hot pot pot! Archaeologists have found pots from 2,000 years ago that may have been used to make an early iteration of hot pot. These were found in the Anhu province of China. Wow, old hot pot. Dude, hot pot for me, every Thanksgiving in the Lim family, we always, always, always eat hot pot. It would make sense that soup was one of the oldest things humans ate. Yeah, just uh, water throw some stuff in there and eat it. Tomorrow, hot pot. Inga, where are we going? We are going to Ayu Noro Sasa Goa to eat some beef soup. That's what I'm talking about. Beef soup. Get that hot pot. Throw some beef in there. Throw some soup in there. Throw some veggies in there. Whatever you want, we're gonna eat it. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I choked on a peanut. Why do you love hot pot so much? How often do you get the deliveries? 每餐, we saw that it arrived by taxi. Is it always come by taxi? That's so cool. The meat takes a cab to every meal. <laughs> <laughs> There's also vegetables in the dish already. For someone who's never had hot pot before, how do you eat it? You also have this pork rice. It's free for all the customers? <laughs> We've eaten a lot of beef on this show, but this is some of the prettiest beef I've ever seen. The color is ridiculous. Cold brewed oolong. This is one of the coolest things. It's like tea snow glow. And it's got the net in no the No way! Yeah. Cheers. Mmm. Want to start with this one? Let's do it. The shoulder cat. Cheers, Steven. One. One. Two. Wow. Three. Going in. One. Mmm. Two. Oh, no. <laughs> this smells incredible. Cheers. Oh. That's nice beef. We're just getting to eat really nice steak yeah. with soup. And you get to eat it the second it's done cooking. Mm. I'm gonna try the same piece of meat this time, but now dip it. Shabu, shabu, ooh. Shabu. That rocks. Can I get in there? Yeah, you All should, right. absolutely. One, two, Whoa. three. It's like you're baptizing ooh. the meat. <laughs> The dip is awesome. Okay. That's doing it right. There's two great ways to enjoy beef. 
You either cook it very briefly or you cook it a really long time. This is the best of both worlds. The quick cooked beef and also the super long cooked beef. Because the soup is a yeah. 10 to 12 hour yeah. steeped in beef bone soup. But enough about beef, pork break. Pork break. Mmm. Mm. At first this did not make sense to me, but it's because the beef is so precious, it breaks up the flow. So I don't just crush my plate of beef all in one bite like I want to. Well, and also this bowl of rice is bringing me more comfort than my body pillow. What? I've had the same one for over 10 years. It's hard to sleep without it. Wow. No, I wash it. That explains a lot about you. It's like a teddy bear. We all have that like item. Yeah, but now comfort. mine is in my parents' attic because I stopped sleeping with it after the age of eight. Why would you give up something that's so comfortable? All right, we're gonna have the broth now. We finally reached the soup part of the meal. Ooh, the smell though. Cheers. Ooh, that is nice. It's not so beefy, actually. It's got like fruity flavor, like yeah. apples or something. This is the best way to close out this meal. Yeah, it's a nice gentle landing. It's like when you have a delicious sauce and you want a piece of bread to mop it up to oh. get all of the sauce. Here, you just drink the sauce. <laughs> Hot pot. That hot pot was so good. Okay, so we've come to Tai Chung for our final soup. But before we have that, we're gonna have some cold drinks. That's right. We're going to Tianren, one of my favorite places in the States. So glad to be having it here in Taiwan, where it's actually from. So we've got oolong tea and a black tea boba. Confession time, I'm not the biggest fan of boba. That's fine. I just, eating while drinking, I don't. Isn't that what soup is? <sighs> soup is drinking while eating. It's completely different. Don't get it twisted. Cheers. Mmm, that's what I like. Unsweetened, nice iced tea. That's all I want. Instead of another soup fact, we're actually gonna have a boba fact. Boba fact. Boba tea was invented in the 1980s in Taichung. Oh, some genius out here putting boba and milk tea together. There are controversies around who actually invented boba milk tea. There's multiple reports of different people, so. Interesting. We're now on our way to Gubami, where we're going to see Chef Chen to try her beef noodle soup. The iconic dish of Taiwan. We've had it a few times off camera so far, just for our crew meals and such, and and it's usually a very inexpensive dish, five or six US dollars equivalent. But today's is going to be a little bit more deluxe. It's gonna cost around 30 US dollars, which is a lot for beef noodle soup, but it's gonna be really good. Gubami is beef noodles in Taiwanese dialect. Why do you think Taiwan loves their beef noodle soup so much? It's fast and also it's luxury. You have a big bowl of noodles, soup, and meat. I never really see restaurants can do all three good. I want to do things the best. So when I do noodles, I want to find out the best formula. So we test with different flours for almost six months, I would say. We want the noodles to be al dente in the middle, but also the outside can absorb a little bit the soup. We use the Japanese Wagyu beef shank, and also we have a condiment of smoked bone marrow. And on top of it, we have some shabu shabu of the beef shank to give two different textures of the meat. What is your background in cooking? like? Where did you come from? <laughs> I learned in Paris. I traveled to States a little bit and then I come back. I started my French restaurant 10 years ago. Very fine dining. It was my dream restaurant, but it's in Taichung. It's very weird. I think Taiwan people, they like something casual. I want to do something smaller and now I have the bar, I have noodle shop. I was just trying to do something I like. <laughs> yeah. It looks like very refined, but I didn't do it on purpose. I just trying to make it good and then it becomes this way. Mm. Look at this. That's not soup. We have tofu skin cooked in some of the beef stock. This is the radish with lemon and olive oil, zucchini, confit and goose fat, some kind of green bean, and beef mushroom deliciousness. I know there's a lot of delicious stuff in front of us. I cannot wait for the soup right now, but I will be patient. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on the soup. <laughs> that is damn good. Green, green bean. bean. Oh, I did not think that was gonna taste like that. What? <laughs> it's a smoky, porky green bean, tofu skin. That looks super juicy and yeah. meaty. Cheers. 
That's the best one. No, this is the best one. No, 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 no. Zucchini. Confit and goose fat. Every time I eat something green, I expect it to taste like a crisp vegetable. Wow. And instead it tastes like a fatty animal. This is awesome. Wow. Finally the beef. Oh. I'm ready to eat some beef in the soup right now. Ooh. Thank you. All Smell right. this thing. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Yeah. I can't believe this. This is a $30 bowl of soup. Broth, cheers. Okay. I didn't think a beef taste could be refreshing. Yeah. How about shabu? Yeah, let's do the choice cut meat on top. Wow. Very flavorful beef. Okay. Jeez! <laughs> that is good. I literally just ate a pastrami sandwich in one bite. Yeah. And the juices of the soup just bursting out. Inca, have some. Come, come, come. This is so good. Mmm. Mmm. Those are great noodles. Springy, chewy. Look at that beef. Wow. Holy crap. I didn't think it was gonna be that soft. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's like softer than taffy. It's softer than, it's somewhere. Oh you gotta be kidding me. Okay, let's add the bone marrow. This is like buttering already buttered bread. Ah, what? Including all the steaks we've eaten, this beef, best beef taste I've ever tasted. And the best part, you get to eat noodles the whole time. It's like usually a steak, you're just eating steak. Pretty fun, but okay. Noodles the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I've had a lot of beef noodle soup before and it's never bad. It's, it's always satisfying and comforting, but this one is like, boy, well, was born in Akron, Ohio. Part of the chosen one in ESPN Magazine when he was 14. Turned out to be a great basketball player. What is this? LeBron James. Oh, God damn it! Every time. <laughs> Gubami. One of the best soup dishes I've ever had. One of the best noodle dishes I've ever had. One of the best beef dishes I've ever had. I like what we did there. Before we get to our Worth It winners, Andrew, what was your favorite thing that was not a soup in this episode? The craft beer at Smartfish. Oh. I never thought I'd see a beer with a fish soup logo. What was your favorite non-soup thing? Beef taxi. There's not even a escort. Yeah. Just beef in the taxi, beef out the taxi. Okay, Steven, which soup was most worth it to you? I thought Smart Fish Soup was gonna be my winner when we ate there. I thought the beef hot pot was gonna be my winner when we ate there. But Gubami is my worth it winner today. So beefy, just so much thought put into it. My worth it winner goes to Smart Fish. Oh. That fish soup was crazy. Truly one of the most unique dishes I've ever eaten. Inka and Annie? Gubami. Gubami. What? Adam, who's your worth it winner? What? <laughs> get, get. I've never been hey. so, uh, this is a worth I it I win first. today. That's it for worth it Taiwan soup. We have one more episode in this mini series coming up next. Steven, what is it? Chicken. We're in Taiwan. We're back with a three-part miniseries. Joining us on all of our episodes, our friend, translator, fellow BuzzFeed producer, and Glam. <laughs> We're gonna see some great modes of transportation, some fun games, some tricks, some treats, and some delights. You know how you know we're in Taiwan? The beautiful 101 Tower. And because it's steamy, which is perfect for the first food that we're doing in our trip, dumplings. A food that's often cooked with steam. Great transition. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three dumplings at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. I am so excited to do dumplings. So excited! I feel like we've been talking about this episode since season one. One of my goals this trip is to brush up on my Mandarin because mm. I have the Mandarin skills of a four-year-old. <laughs> my goal is to get it to a five-year-old by the end of this trip. That's a very good goal. Thank yeah. you. Dumpling number one. We're going to see Miss Lu in her restaurant. Liu Jia Sui Jin Bao. Liu Jia Sui Jin Bao. How's that? Is that good? Good. We're gonna get some 50 cent pan fried dumplings. Have we that ever is... had a price so low on worth it? No, we haven't. That is a drastic price point. <laughs> 
you've been making dumplings for 30 years. I'm just curious what you think makes a perfect dumpling. What types of buns do you serve here? And which one is your favorite? We've heard that the dough of your buns is very delicious. What makes it so special? We've should we have? Oh, great. You know how you're actually in Taiwan? How? Dumplings. And motor scooter sounds. It's a beautiful noise. So not only are we having dumplings, but we're also having soy milk. So we noticed you're actually making your own soy milk here. Can you tell us about how you guys make that? Cheers. Oh! Jeez. What? I didn't know that's what soy milk's supposed to taste like. <laughs> kind of like a peanut butter drink. Uh -huh. Like that's how nutty it tastes to me. Inka, how's the soy milk? I'm like almost done with oh it. Oh really? my gosh. I really like the soy milk. This is really good. It's like the first time I had full fat oh, milk. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, Adam, try some soy milk. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. get to the buns. Let's get to the buns. Pork, cabbage, chive. Look at the bottom crust. It's like a little, hi, I'm crispy. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> the dough is so good. What was the term for chewy? QQ. QQ? Q -Q? Is that an actual term? Yeah. This is so QQ. <laughs> I don't know how to describe the weight of it, but... It's pleasantly plump. Pleasantly plump. Okay, the pork bun. <laughs> oh. Whoa! That's my favorite. Adam, you want to take a bite? You know my problem with burgers? Oh. <laughs> you're playing a game of like Jenga, Tetris, as you're biting into it. With a bun, you're not losing anything. Lastly, the cabbage. I love the shape of this one. It looks like a, a clam. This is 50 cents. We just ate $3 of food, by the way. Okay, this one might actually be my favorite. Damn it. <laughs> I don't live in Taiwan. 50 cents? I don't even have to be hungry. It's just, <laughs> it, would, it would be foolish not to. The pleasure you get out of chewing really good, good bread. Dough. Yeah. Oh my gosh. QQ. QQ. I think you need to open this in America. I can give you my address. Just open up shop next to me because I need to eat this on my way to work, please. That was a dumpling. Well, it was actually a bao, but bao is a dumpling. QQ is my new favorite food terminology. It's uh, quite warm here in Taiwan, it's so I think before we need have our next dumpling, we need a refreshing treat. We're in Taiwan, what kind of treat should we have? Shaved ice! We're going to Showa Ice. The Chinese name is... Zhaohe Bingshi. Zhaohe Bingshi. 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 This looks awesome. This is one of your favorite desserts, right? Not this yeah. specifically, but shaved ice in shaved general. Shaved ice generally. So there's two types of shaved ice here. Classic mango chunks on top of milk shaved ice, and then chocolate shaved ice with whiskey. It's really good, but it tastes really different. Ooh. I'm going full mango. Oh, wow. This texture is very surprising. Oh, the mango. Inka, get in here and try this mango. This is like Garden of Eden mango right here. Mm. It's so sweet. Of course that tastes good. You drink whiskey with ice? Yeah. And chocolate. Chocolate works. We're eating a food that's cooked with steam, and now we're eating ice. So we're just exploring all the, yeah. what do they call that, states of matter? Yeah. Do you have any chemists yes. in the room? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> all right, chemist. Give me a fact. <laughs> dumpling fact. It's not a dumpling fact. Huh? 
It's related to dumplings, though. <laughs> Dumpling related fact. Dumpling related fact. Because most foods humans eat are soft, the body and brain have learned to like the novelty of an opposing texture like crunch. Even after all that effort to make a perfectly QQ dough, mm -hmm. it's still worth it to add the crunch on the bottom. Back to the perfect food, man. All right. We're off to our next dumpling spot. We're gonna go see Mr. Chen at his steamed dumpling restaurant. Inka, what's the name of it? Ding Hao Zilin Zen Jiao Guan. Ding Hao Zilin Zilin Zen Jiao Guan. Zen Jiao Guan. You're learning. Nice. How many dumplings do you think your restaurant makes per day? We have a day to 450 And they're all made by hand. What makes a really great dumpling? For me, this is the perfect amount of dumplings. The most important is the amount of dumplings. If you eat the right amount, the amount of dumplings will come out. Plus the amount of dumplings, that is the best. When customers come here, are they only eating dumplings or are they ordering other things as well? The most of them will eat the dumplings. The dumplings. And the dumplings. The dumplings are the best because the dumplings are the best. 配着吃的，所以说他们大部分都会拿一个、两个来配着吃。So we should order a few more things as well. 是，因为你们一趟从美国来，对不对？那一定每一样可能都要点到来尝一下口味。That's right. We've built out our meal with some extra stuff here. We have. Let's dumpling it up. They make 5,000 of these. A literal army of dumplings yeah. in one day. Feels like I'm fighting an army of dumplings with my mouth. Boom. Dip. That's incredible. Oh, wow. Dumplings I've had in the past, once it's steamed, it becomes loose around the filling. Yeah. But these are tight and dense and still juicy inside. So juicy. Let's do a side dish break. I vote century egg tofu madness. Yeah. That's why you have the meat and tofu, because they have the flavor of the two. They have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the two. That's why you have the flavor of the <laughs> wow. Whoa. Wow. That's not what I was gonna do. Wow. Okay. Oh. Yay. Okay. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know what I realized? Yeah. Egg. Nature's dumpling. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Cheers, hey, Steve. Cheers. 200 years. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Hold that up. Hold that up. Yeah, that's This what the is egg. egg, and you can see through it. It's very jelly. All right, so here we have the vegetable dumpling. Watching them make these dumplings was like magic. They close their hands, and when they open it, there's a dumpling. It's really like someone's doing a card trick in front of your eyes. Fun fact, this is actually Inca's grandmother's suggestion. Of where really? To eat. Yeah, my grandma was the one who recommended this place to me. Good recommendation. It's so cute, cute. <laughs> Think about the amount of work that's put into these dumplings and how cheap it is. That is the ultimate magic trick. That pork dumpling. Like a Korean spa. Like a dry cleaned shirt. Steamed, steamed to, to perfection. perfection. Our next dumpling is also going to be steamed. We're having the soup dumpling. The xiaolongbao. That's right. But before we do that, we're going to have another Taiwanese dessert treat. Sunny Hills Pineapple Cake. It's one of my, oh my god. It's one of my favorite places. Oh, so every time you come here, even if you don't buy anything, they will give this to you, like a pineapple cake with oolong tea. That's confidence. That's like, we know how good it is because you're definitely gonna get it. Yes, and you will. Cheers. 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 Ooh, long. Good, right? <laughs> Golly. Pineapple cakes are really good. Buttery and flaky on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then you get that really fresh pineapple sweetness and tartness. Iconic. Iconic. New York and cheesecakes, Taiwan and pineapple cake. Yes. Or yes. Something, yes. Something like yes. that? Yes. Smell it. Mmm. Right? Mmm. Okay, I see. I got it. Yeah. You know, I've never had pineapple jamified like this. Should we just pop the rest? Well, you might want to save to enjoy it while you listen to this. Dumpling fact. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
What is fact in Mandarin? Oh, could you say dumpling fact? 饺子的真相 Doesn't Andrew do language better? Say it again. Whoa, 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 whoa! 饺子的真相饺子的真相饺子的 <laughs> in 2013 and 2014, chef turned writer Christopher St. Cavish created a soup dumpling index measuring the thickness of the dough, the soup volume, and the total weight of each individual Xiaolong Bao at 52 different restaurants. This data was then calculated with the formula filling plus soup divided by thickness of skin times 100 to assign a score representing the quality of structural engineering in Xiaolong Bao. Look. Quadratic formula was already hard enough. All right, next up, we're going to a soup per star, oh. soup dumpling spot, Dean Taifong. We're gonna meet the boss man, Mr. Young. It originated here in Taiwan. They, right now, at this very moment, have 164 locations worldwide. That's, that's at this moment. That's wild. By tomorrow, there may be 180. <laughs> we don't know. We're gonna go eat their truffle soup dumpling. Truffle. Have you had it before? Not truffle. I'm not bougie. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk away from that comment. <laughs> 鼎泰丰是我父亲在一九五八年创立的这个油行，然后一九七二年改成鼎泰丰小吃店。Was it always soup dumplings? 对，小笼包是我们最出名的。研发是我们在七二年一位师傅教我们做出来，我们经过不断的改良。How do you get the soup inside the dumpling? Yeah. 那是秘密，有谁会讲？开玩笑,<笑>，那个怎么讲？就是用这个猪皮的皮冻去做成的汤汁。So when it's steamed, it becomes liquidy. 然后蒸的时候就变就化掉。对，现料是大概在十八度的环境之下，在我们的中央厨房制作出来的。当客人这个要的时候，我们就会现做。然后十八折的呈现。What's important about that pleating process? 你如果折不够哦，可能太粗也不好看。折的太多折，感觉可能也不是这么好。How do you maintain such high quality around the world? 品质好就是要靠这个大家。共同努力哦，去把它完成的。我想这个每一个师傅用心的制作每一样食物，我想那是非常重要的，所以让同事都能够有非常好的工作的这个报酬。所以每一个员工都非常用心的把自己应该做的工作把它做好，可以提供最好的服务给每一位客人。This is the Taihu IPA. Ooh. It's locally brewed and okay. it has a really strong flavor of fruits. Oh, the logo is great. It's a tiger. Cheers, Stephen. Cheers. Mmm. That's, That's like good. Almost cider. So then for the pork shalom bao, the most important part is the soup inside. It's sort of like the soul of the shalom bao. So we lift it up from the top, we place it at the back. Oh, <laughs> sorry, the, the spoon. bottom just sagged down in a very satisfying way. We poke yeah. a little hole inside to okay. let the broth come out. Oh, okay. okay. And then please take a sip. You gonna wait for me or just eat alone? Okay, great. I'm following instructions, Stephen. Mmm. Nice. Yes, nice. And then we can add a little bit of ginger with okay. the sauce on top, and then you can enjoy the shallow bao together. All right, no way for you to drink your yeah. I'm not good at. Po How did you poke that so well? <laughs> Would you need Mike. some help? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's really good. It's almost cloth-like. The like bottom a fabric. of it. The broth has like a sweetness to it. It's so good. Do people ever eat it in one bite? Yes, they do. But please be careful because it's really hot. Right. Okay. Sometimes you just gotta fly too close to the sun though, so. I feel like I wanna feel it burst in my mouth. Mmm. It is hot. <laughs> we mentioned it so much in this video, but I really have to bring it back to the QQ. Even though the dough is so thin, it still is very satisfying. How do you attain that kind of texture in like a film sheet? Adam, can you try this please? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, it's really good. This is our truffle and pork shalong bao. Why do a truffle soup dumpling? That Italian restaurant has a hei song lu sou tiao. Later, friends recommend that we should sell a truffle soup dumpling. It has a soft, soft flavor, and it doesn't weigh too much. Cleanse my palate. Mmm. 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 Mmm.
Oh, what? <laughs> Bougie cheers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> These are awesome. Okay, last season we ate soup that had truffle in it. We learned that it has to be activated by heat and fat. Right. So the truffle in a soup dumpling totally makes sense. It really says something about this dough that even though it's still thin, you still get that QQ. It's impossibly thin. A uh, common complaint about our show is that we always just put truffle on stuff to make it more expensive. And we see you comment section. We see you. But these are about three US dollars per dumpling. Which is expensive, but for the taste of truffle, how nice this is, I'd say that's worth it. <laughs> Show title, watch out. <laughs> they're doing truffle right. Yeah, they're not doing it wrong. <laughs> Adam, you wanna see if they're doing it right? <laughs> so we're here at Rauha Night Market because Inca suggested that we come and eat their stinky tofu. The smell around the stall is quite stinky, but once it's fried, it is much more subdued. Cheers, Steven. Cheers. Mmm, so juicy. Holy crap, speaking of soup dumpling, that's a soup tofu. Try stinky tofu. Okay, so before we get to our worth it winners, what was your favorite thing in this episode that was not a dumpling? My favorite thing was the fire hydrant soy milk <laughs> at the Liu Jia Suijian Bao place. The visuals of that are just astounding. My favorite thing was getting dressed like a scientist at Din Tai Fung Central Kitchen. We went through this airlock that blew all the dust and hair off of us, and we got to see some uh, really cool behind the scenes stuff. So Steven, which dumpling was the most worth it to you at its given price? My worth it winner today goes to the pan fried dumplings at Liu Jia Suijian Bao. The value was incredible there. The dumplings were amazing. The cabbage bun at that location was very nearly my worth it winner, but I have to give it to the steamed pork dumplings at location two. Like my fantasy of a dumpling is that dumpling. Inka, who's your worth it winner? I don't know. It's so hard. I want to say two because it's my grandma's favorite, but I think it's honestly one. Annie? <laughs> Adam says his winner is Din Tai Fung. Next week, soup. That's right, soup again. So soon, you say. Trust us. Taiwan may be the perfect place to have soup. Yes. So excited. There's so many soups. We have so many soups. It's going to be great. So many soups. <laughs> Worth It Taiwan is back. Worth It Chicken. Is that a chicken? Yeah. Kind of. It's a rooster, which is a chicken. Is that a chicken? No, it's a pigeon. We're here at Tainan's Garden Night Market. We've just picked up our chicken treats. Tomorrow, the journey begins. We're going to three cities for three acts of chicken, ending in a chicken finale like you've never seen before. Bok bok bish. Lego. Mmm. It's like a pancake. Today and Worth It, we're gonna be trying three chicken dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. So we're eating chicken, but our first chicken is actually a soup. I know we just finished a soup video, but that's just how many soups there are here. You can't escape the soup. We're off to see the Chen family at Walking Su, where we're gonna be trying their sesame oil mm. chicken. What is that in Mandarin, Inka? Mayoji. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm excited to eat some chicken. Let's do it. Tell us about how this business got started. We started in the winter. When we the winter, we prepared a lot of students here. We have a lot of 可能是因為我們是小攤車而已
Okay, I'll from that time, the machine gun started to sell. So this is a family business. What do each of you do? Father, he is specialized in chopping meat because he needs strength. Mother, she is charge of cutting meat. Then I am charge of preparing food, cutting vegetables, and organizing the environment. Do you find it easy working together? Happy, but it is very easy to fight because we are a family. But when we are together, the time for talking and romance will be better than before. Sesame oil chicken. Is that dish a classic Taiwanese dish? Naiyuji, in the summer, every mother will make it. So we just add the oil. But the oil is less. It is very good. It is a classic Taiwanese dish. It has been done for 30 years. I was a young man. What are those herbs adding to this dish? I want to add some important vegetables so that the child can recover. Then add some oil in the oil. It will not be so oily. It is a very popular dish for young people to accept. This looks incredible. We've got a couple additional accoutrement here. The Thai basil sauce, the spicy fermented bean paste, and sticky rice. All right, so let's taste the broth. Sesame oil chicken. Mmm, delightful nuttiness of the sesame oil. Yeah. Super nutty. It's like Super. It's got this hearty feel to it. Oh, yeah, this is hearty as f <laughs> How's that? Oh, it's so incredibly juicy and tender. And, uh, I'm gonna smell the Thai basil because that's their specialty here. Whoa, it smells like pesto? Yeah. What? That is awesome. That is like a salad dressing to dip your soup into. Adam, oh. you gotta try the chicken in the Thai basil. Oh. <laughs> Wanna try some rice? Oh, yes. Chicken, Cheers. Steven. The thing I keep getting blown away by in Taiwan, I go to a meal expecting one thing, and then there's always all this bonus stuff mm -hmm. that just blows my expectations out of the water. Yeah, I mean, even when they first started this restaurant, this yeah. was a bonus dish. Right, this was a That's crazy thing. So there's a lot of herbs added to this soup. It tastes like an elixir. It just washes away all the pain on your body. Achy back. I got a soup for that. Tired eyes. Soup for that. My foot hurts. Throw some soup on there. It's all the same soup. It's very convenient. Adam, you want to get some of the soup? I'm pretending like Adam's over here, even though he's over there. Hey. <laughs> so our next chicken location is in Taipei. Mm. But first, we're going to take a countryside detour. Yeah, that's right. We're going to a scallion farm in Yilan, and we're going to be making our own scallion pancakes. Not just cooking them. We're going to pick them ourselves. Scallions. Yes. Yeah. It's a chicken episode, it's a soup episode, and now it's a pancake episode. What you see in front of you here is a scallion pancake, but rewind three hours. What did we do? We're in this unique valley where you get different temperature winds at different times of day, which create a nice perfect humidity for growing scallions. So today, we've picked a bunch of scallions, cleaned them up, chopped them, cried a little bit, and then learned how to make scallion pancakes. And here we have it, the spoils of our toils. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Oh my god. Yo. Mmm. Okay. This is one of the best things I've eaten so far. You know what time it is now? Time for a Taiwan food fact. The concept of xiao chi, meaning little eats, is popular in Taiwan. Basically meaning snacking throughout the day, often on street food, between oh, meals. Of course, yeah. In Taiwan, if you only eat three meals in one day, you're just doing it wrong. But we're actually on our way to a snack shop next. Inka, where are we going? Uh, to Zha Xiao Shi Dian. We're going to see Reebok and Julia and try their fried chicken. What makes a perfect fried chicken to you guys? So what makes your Taiwanese fried chicken unique? Quay 
然后你就可以轻松喝酒，然后轻松搭配一些食物的那种概念。What do you recommend that we drink with the fried chicken? 气泡酒，炸物本来就是油感比较多的啊，然后气泡酒要有泡泡，它可以刮你的舌头，那你整个吃起来不会那么油腻。会做这个其实也是有一点像类似说那个 tapas 的引发，是因为去西班牙工作，所以才会接触西班牙的菜这样。What? This is not what I was expecting. You ready, Steven? I'm ready. This is called dining al fresco. So we've ordered the recommended sparkling wine. Apparently, you only order by the bottle here. I like that. Let's go. It's my speed. Cheers. How awesome is this? This is some Riviera. We gotta eat this while it's hot. So let's go. Ooh. Oh, it it's so, so fragrant. Good. The garlic, oh. the onion, this basil. The meat inside is so soft. It was it's very like, pleasing. Very pleasing, like brulee marshmallows. Seriously, oh man, that's wild. I thought Kufu was only for dumplings. Wow. <laughs> it's so soft. It's almost like chicken nugget esque. You know what's crazy about this? We've eaten fried chicken in Minneapolis, where the restaurant thought, you know, what's actually the best drink to have with fried chicken? Sparkling wine. And here we are in Taiwan. And this restaurant I see. had the same idea. I see. If there's a restaurant on either side of the world that is doing the same thing, it must be great. Today, the other thing is that we are preparing the main dish, and then we will cut the meat with the knife. After it is cut, we will divide it into pieces. Today, we are preparing the Taiwanese traditional dish, the pork knuckle. I'm scared to eat this because I'm scared of how much I like it. Pork knuckle and radish cake. Wow. Let's see. 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 Let's Oh man, watch out, they're gonna push me off my stool. Radish cake is a classic dim sum dish. I've eaten this like every time I go out. You know how they bring it on the carts and like they're all steamed, right? It's still hot, but it doesn't have that like break through the crunch texture yeah. that this has. You can maybe liken it to a potato pancake. That's so good. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. How should we eat the pork knuckle? By hand. By hand? Just like an apple? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Kinda looks like a donut. Oh. Yours does. Mine does. Cheers. Oh. Oh my god. This is like a pork donut. Wow. <laughs> so this is actually cartilage, but it feels like that with how loosey-goosey it is. The yeah. gelatin is oh. the jelly of this pork donut. Right. And to wash it down, sparkling wine. Oh, thank goodness for this. How awesome is this? Thank, thank you. you. This thank is you. really good. Yeah. We are at the Regent Hotel where they serve a boba croissant. Yes, you heard me right. Boba croissant. We got the matcha, tiramisu, and the milk tea. Which one do you want? My gut is going toward matcha, but I'm going against my gut and go for the tiramisu. I actually knew that you were gonna pick that one because it has gold flake on it. <laughs> All right, I'll go milk tea. Very satisfying to pick up. Cheers. Cheers. Are you gonna bite into it? Yeah. Or open it up? I'm gonna bite into it. Oh! <gasps> This is just all of the textures. It's nice, it's like satisfyingly squishy. Mm -hmm. I think there's a word for that, QQ. Ready for a Taiwan food fact, Steven? Taiwan food fact, Taiwan food fact. Um. Up until the 1960s, the most common Taiwanese breakfast was rice or congee. Buns emerged as a popular Taiwanese food in the 1960s when US trade introduced wheat into the Taiwanese diet. Shouldn't that fact go in the dumpling episode that we did? Well, it's more about breakfast. I just wanted an excuse to talk about congee because it's just a nice, savory thing to have for breakfast. This is a very good croissant. Yeah. I got a cake. Oh my. This boba croissant is part of a boba festival boba happening fest. here at the region. <laughs> and Inga's got the uh, crown jewel of the festival. And now it's time to take a little train ride. Q Q. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna hear my boba rap? Yeah. How do you like your boba? Yeah. Eat it like a cobra. Yeah. My name is Yoda. Yeah. And I like yoga. Now dab. <laughs> Never. This is a train water bottle that they sell on the train. <laughs> So once we get done with this guy, we'll be in Taichung, and we'll be eating at our final chicken location. We're gonna go meet Xu Laoban at Yanxiang Lou to have beggar's chicken. 
What kind of cuisine is the food here? It is属于广东菜。啊！但是有经过了台湾的一群年轻的师傅，将广东菜带上台湾的特色，做出一些创新跟不同的感受。呃，今天来帮我们做架花鸡的是呃我们店里的阿辉师傅，他也是在二零一七年在香港比赛粤菜的银牌得奖的之一。Tell us about this dish, the beggar's chicken。那他是以前的乾隆下江南的时候。然后他在路边看到了一个叫花子，然后他吃了一个非常 delicious 的一个美食。因为以前的工具不多，他只能用的泥土啊，把鸡放在荷叶里面，然后加上了少许的调味料啊。因为乾隆在那个时候他刚好肚子非常的饿，那就品尝了一下，那后来就给他命名为叫花鸡。What happened to the beggar? I don't know. I don't know. I think I should give him some gold. I hope so. Hello, I'm Liao Yihui. I'm the owner of the Yuan Xiangrou. Why bake the chicken in clay? Because it's hot. It's like when we bake the chicken in clay, it's hot. It's like when we bake the chicken in clay, it's hot. It's like when we bake the chicken in clay, it's hot. It's like when we bake the chicken in clay, it's hot. 整只鸡用酱油腌过，再用高温的油下去炸成金黄色，再下姜丝、当归、川芪，就是中药、香菇啊、牛肝菌、栗子、蒜子下去爆香，炒好的时候捞起，把它塞在鸡的肚子里面，土包起来下去烤，差不多六个小时。How do we get the chicken out from the clay? <笑>当它到你的这个 table 旁边的时候，它会先点火，点火完了之后，然后会邀请说：“咦，有没有人要共享盛举？”拿着那个锤子，就用力的一敲、两敲、三敲这样子。敲的时候，就是所有的朋友都非常高兴的。Which one of us gets to do it? I'll do the hammering. You do hammer time. What? You just automatically assume that you get to hammer? 呃、uh, ，你说两个一起吗？不行。对啊。可以吗？ Oh, 可以啊。You can、okay. both do it. Yeah, 可以啊，可以啊。Two hammers. Yeah. Okay. Great. Result. Ooh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to our final meal in Taiwan. Oh no! I know. Oh. Cheers. Since this is our last meal in Taiwan, we're blowing it out. Let's do it. I saw a little sneak peek of what's coming upstairs. This is gonna blow you away. So this is winter melon. Whoa! Wow! Wow! <laughs> What? Look at it coming out, pouring on the fish's head. These look too real. <laughs> look at the scales on these guys. Honestly, every time I've seen a koi fish, I thought they look like a tasty fish. Cheers, Stephen. Fish kiss. <laughs> this is a good dumpling. Oh, fish, super good. This looks like in Hook when Robin Williams is imagining the food. Have you seen this movie? It's all like vibrant colors. Mm -hmm. Do yourself a favor, go watch Hook. You'll have a delightful time. You'll be reminded of this moment. I'm going pink for my hair. We might as well have just shot all three episodes here. Mm. Mm. Much like the origin myth, first we're eating like an emperor, and then we're taking a journey to discover the chicken. Food is all about storytelling. Well, yeah. and taste. But also storytelling. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, yo. okay. What? Yes, the. What? You guys can go up now. Hammer time. Okay. All right, Stephen. I'm nervous. I am scared too. One, two, two three. three. Wow. Nice. Looks like chocolate. Oh. Smells like dirt. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> we just hatched our chicken dinner. It is very dino egg-like. Mmm. Mm. Wow. <laughs> chicken cheers. Chicken cheers. Oh, that's good. What? That is so soft. Some people say chicken's a boring meat. I would say those people haven't had it. Deep fried, baked in clay, stuffed with pork and aromatics. There's pork in the chicken? Yeah. So now she's just adding like a sauce. I think it's like an oyster sauce slurry. Oh. <laughs> that tastes like my mom's fried rice. Whoa. Mm. That was weird. Mom? <laughs> <laughs> you know what this chicken is? It's a time capsule Uh huh. for flavor, buried under dirt, much like a regular time capsule. But it's also 
a dish from the Ming Dynasty. Is there a letter written in there? Like, dear diary, <laughs> do I still taste good? Yeah. Very soft. Very soft. At its core, this dish is just a plate of really nice chicken. So simple, so perfect. We're gonna take it back into artistry land now, if that's okay with you. Let's do it. What is going on <laughs> yeah. right now? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Looks like a scene from Nightmare Before Christmas. This is too beautiful not to share. I think we should get everybody in here and we all take a bite. Who wants a swan? Who wants a pumpkin? Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. What? Oh. <laughs> oh my God, it's a red bean. Why? Wow. Why? Not why. Why not? Worth it. Beggar's chicken. You know they say beggars can't be choosers, but <laughs> beggars can be chicken. That was quite an experience. Steven, before we get to our Worth It winners, mm -hmm. what was your favorite thing that wasn't one of the highlight foods in this Worth It episode? The pork knuckle at Chuja's Xiao Shi Dian. Mm. It's the knuckle. It was so good. I contemplated eating my own knuckles. What was your favorite thing? Honestly, the hard ass rain while we were filming location two. We had a typhoon barely graze us, but we still got some awesome hard rain, which I love. Which chicken was the most worth it to you? My worth it winner, walking Sioux sesame oil chicken. Woo! If that chicken had been in the soup episode, it would have won that episode too. Wow. Comforting, exciting, inexpensive, it was wonderful. Who's your worth it winner? Okay, Walking Sioux, totally new experience. Yeah. Yan Shang Lu. If you could eat with your eyes, that place would have won. But because that pork knuckle was so effing good, my worth it winner must go to Chu Jia Xiao Shi Dian. Inka, worth it winner. Chu Jia Xiao Shi Dian with Reebok oh. and Julia. Annie? This one. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Yeah. Ooh, the fried chicken. Very good choice. All right. To wrap on Worth of Taiwan. Very special thank you to the Taiwan Tourism Bureau that helped us out tremendously with this trip. Couldn't have been here without them. All right, let's get out of here. Bye. <laughs>
burgers specifically. My wife and I, we were always really into burgers and got into the food scene of LA. Bringing together all the burgers we ate, I thought, oh, I want to try making this burger myself. I started in my backyard with no intention of opening a restaurant. For a couple of weeks, I was just begging people to come try the burger, friends, coworkers, whoever. Then some people approached me, asking me if I wanted to open a restaurant. And throughout my whole life, I usually just jump in. And I thought, let's give this a shot and see what happens. We have a sign right here that says, always order two. Why? It's a note to the backyard. You know, people would order one and they would regret it and then there would be a long line or we would get sold out, so. Is two still doable? I recommend two for you, yeah. What about you, do you do two? I eat two, I've eaten like six in one day, so. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, we're gonna do six probably over the course of this day for us, so why not start with two? <sighs> Here we go. All right, Jackson, take it away. Worth it, double cheeseburger, take one. Nice. That's perfect, that's better than I usually do. <laughs> take two. <laughs> so that burger's never say die. They also have soft serve ice cream. Insider pro tip, you get your soft serve in a cup, order a soda on the side, and then mix it for your own float. Okay. What are the correct proportions for a float? Does anybody know? The whole bottle. It's a feel. Jackson's beer. got classic root beer float. Yeah. This is Steven's. I got chocolate and a blueberry root beer. Okay, when, 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 when? Cheers. 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 How do you eat this? Who thought of Ooh. floats? Pour some soda on some ice cream. That's like some the parents aren't home mystery, <laughs> you know? Cheers. Cheers. That fry. Tastes like McDonald's. Tastes like McDonald's, yeah. So these um, fries are fried in beef tallow. Apparently this is what McDonald's tasted like way back in the day before they switched to a vegetable oil. Staying true to their motto, we've got two burgers for each of us except for you, Jackson, because this is your first time on one of these rodeos. <laughs> I don't want to do that to you. <laughs> Whoa. It looks the way a fast food burger looks in a commercial, but this is how it is in real life. It smells good. Great bun smell, you know? Did you think you'd have to wait this long before you actually get to take a bite? <laughs> Can I point one more physical attribute of this burger before we bite into it? Sorry, Jackson. Look at the way it, it's like a lattice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crispy. Very crispy. Like you can almost see through the meat. Like a spider's web. Here we Cheers. Go. Cheers. Cheers. Oh man. Mm. Oh. It's crunchy too. It's really, it's really crunchy. crunchy, yeah. It's the essence of burger. Nothing extra, there's not like strange sauces or condiments. Mm -hmm. Oh man. This might be the best burger I've ever had. Oh man. Like truly. Would you agree with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's all your food. <laughs> <laughs> Next burger, here we go. You would definitely be satisfied by one of these, but you're gonna want to. I do agree. Order two. Ugh, what am I doing with my life now? I'm only slightly lactose intolerant, so. Low levels of cheese, that's fine. Are you lactose intolerant at all? No. You're a lucky person. Oh, we had ice cream too, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, what do you think about the part of the show where Adam eats? He takes really large bites. <laughs> I'm gonna finish mine before you. Of course. What a cheeseburger. That was insane. Sorry, I, <laughs> we keep doing this in time. Oh. Twins. Look who's simpatico. So before our next double cheeseburger, we're actually gonna get another double cheeseburger. <laughs> We're going to this French restaurant in West Hollywood called Tess. I saw on Instagram that for National Burger Day, they made, we're just gonna call it a special dessert burger. We reached out and the pastry chef Sally so kindly agreed to remake it, but double this time. This might be the most visually appealing burger of the day. Close your eyes. Close, okay. Man, this is gonna blow you away. Three, two, one, reveal. <laughs> it's very realistic. Dude. Is that a strawberry? Yes. yes. Two macarons, chocolate ganache, mango passion fruit cheese, strawberry slices, shiso leaf, and a raspberry jelly for the ketchup. Wow. If you did not tell me that was dessert, I would not have guessed it. Cheers. Cheers. How to eat this. Mmm. Uh, uh. Ooh. It's actually really good. I mean, it's chocolate and fruit. What's not to like? It's sweet and bitter at the same time. That's the notch. The tasting notes coming off of Jackson. This isn't your first time, is it? All right, all right, all right. No. I retire today. You can have the. <laughs> Do you know what time it is now? Yes. Oh, you're asking me or Jackson. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'd be concerned. <laughs> fact time. That's right, double cheeseburger fact. Double cheeseburger fact. One minute. <laughs> <laughs> double cheeseburger fact. Bob's Big Boy is credited with selling the first double cheeseburger in 1937. The chain's original name was Bob's Pantry, but after the double cheeseburger, dubbed the Big Boy, was invented, the restaurant changed its name to boast its famous burger. 
The double cheeseburger became so famous, they changed their restaurant name. What about renaming this show? Whoa! Whoa. It would probably be called Adam's Silent Bite. <laughs> no, Adam's Big Bite. Adam's Big Bite, <laughs> yes. For our next double cheeseburger, we're on our way to see Frederick and Max at Burger Lords in Highland Park. Similar to this double cheeseburger, this next double cheeseburger made without meat. I've never had a veggie cheeseburger before. Curveball for the episode. I'm scared and excited. Scared and excited is a good place to be with food. <laughs> Tell us what kind of restaurant Burger Lords is. The way I think of it's kind of a bizarro version of a traditional fast food restaurant. You're used to a frozen garden burger, portobello. This is the opposite, where everything is vegan, vegetarian, except the beef burger. Do you think you're more popular with traditional beef cheeseburgers or with the vegetarian and vegan crowd? Honestly, it's like 50-50. Yeah? yeah? Yeah. We look at it every week. How did you guys develop the recipe for this patty? Everything kind of has its role. The barley for chewiness and cashews give it a nice crunch. We're roasting all the eggplant, slicing up the other vegetables. Those get sauteed with all the spices on the flat top, cooking barley in a rice cooker with kombu and miso, roasting nuts, garbanzo beans, cashews, and then it all goes into one batch and just mixed up. Once it's cold, it settles, and then we're balling it like a traditional burger. We roll it in panko, then we patty it out. So the panko, when it's cooking, gives it a kind of crispy edge. Helps keep the patty from burning on the grill too. Mm. All of the work comes at the beginning, so we can push it out really fast. On average, I mean, our tickets are like five to 10 minutes. It's like Neo fast food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it feels like fast food. It looks like it on the exterior, but in the kitchen, we're cooking all day. Now that you've explained all of this, it feels like a burger joint is the hardest thing to do <laughs> for vegetarians. Like, yeah. why did you want to tackle a burger joint? Well, you know, there's the nostalgia. You know, it's the experience of a diner, a fast food restaurant having fries and eating a burger. It was also to create something that we didn't think really existed here. You know, when we grew up, there was a lot of times we felt left out. So we wanted to make sure that everyone felt they had a good option here. So to round out our experience, we also got the tofu nuggets and french fries, Lord of the Fries style. Lord of the Fries. It's a good pun. Have you read Lord of the Flies yet? <laughs> 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 oh god. Can't take you anywhere. Cheers. 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 Oh, those are good. Funny napkins. Oh my goodness. For the first time in my life, I have somebody who's also a messy eater. Look at that. Cheese crust. <laughs> it's got the cheese crust. Cheers. Cheers. Roger bumps. Mmm. This is good. Wow. It doesn't taste like plants at all. It tastes like real beef. It's hot, cheesy, juicy, meaty. And yet there's no meat. So when you think, man, I could really go for a burger right now, does this satisfy that feeling? 100%. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> Are you gonna finish that thing, Steven? I'm trying to. Put a little hot sauce on there. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, hot yeah. sauce me. You know what? That's really good. It's a nice little kick. It really brightens the flavor of the burger. Oh, it has a good kick to it. That was good. It is like I'm like in a different universe right now. Vegetarian food in this universe is the norm. It does kind of feel like we're on a Twilight Zone set a little bit. Just like transported back in time but to an alternate reality where everybody's a vegetarian. And you know what? Pretty good. You ever watch Twilight Zone? Wow, that's a good bite. Life blowing. Life blowing. <laughs> Not just mind blowing. Life blowing. Life. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm on patty number 10. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh, eight. Sorry, eight. It was eight. I can't yeah. count anymore. That's how many patties I've had. Before we go to our last burger, it's time for one more burger fact. Double cheeseburger fact. Oh, dang it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you like to read the fact today? Sure. The price of the Big Mac when it debuted nationwide was 49 cents. 49 cents? So you're telling me I could go to a McDonald's with two quarters and come back with a Big Mac and a penny? Yeah, in the 60s when it debuted. Oh, sorry. Back, Not, yeah, back no. in the 60s. <laughs> back in the 60s, right. We're on our way to Petit Trois, where we're gonna see Chef Ludo and his double cheeseburger called the Big Mac. And what is on this Big Mac? Well, it's a French restaurant, so sauce. Petit Trois, it's a classic French restaurant. The design and the food is very French. And so you have this burger. How does that fit into that classic menu? In France, we eat a lot of steak haché. You know, the party. So I decided to just do a burger, like what Americans like. You know, I look, I love burger too. What makes a really good burger? The burger needs to be crispy and juicy. When I eat a steak or any meat, that's what I want. 
Yeah. I want the meat to be crispy. It's called the Big Mac, styled after the Big Mac, of course, right? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. of course. Mac in France mean guys have two partners, John and Vinny, and we are the Mac. <laughs> French food is all about the sauce. So it was very important for me to have my burger in the plate, swimming in the sauce, <laughs> like when you eat a steak. So I decided to do a classic French sauce called Bordelaise, beef stock with a lot of shallot and red wine sauce. We take like eight hours to do. Then after we have an aged cheddar cheese. I didn't know if I was going to put aged cheddar cheese or American cheese, because I love American cheese. Really? I oh, love that. You love American okay, cheese? We don't like American cheese, guys, come on. Some people don't. When I think about French cuisine, I think fine dining, or I think like kind of... Foufou? Yeah, a little bit, I, don't, I mean, this burger is not what comes to mind, right? My job as a chef, it's also to cook what people want, and it's fun to mix, you know, uh, American food with uh, French cuisine. I recommend to eat the burger with a uh, fork and knife, very French fofu, like you say. You, know, <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So is fork and knife? In French, we eat our burger with a fork and knife. Okay, guys, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we do. There it is. It's really unlike any burger I've ever seen before. Look at how it's right? plated. It's in a pool of sauce. Yeah, it looks like a lily pad in a murky pond. Will you do the honors? Oh, oh okay. Everybody in there is gonna watch you cut this in half. We're, we're, we're losing traction here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a $25 Whoa. cheeseburger that you're just hacking through. Double stab through the whole thing to secure your bite. Gonna... What? Oh, God. <laughs> I regret saying that I would be okay sharing the burger. I'm gonna cheers. Cheers. And then I'm gonna mop up some sauce. It's magical. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Wow. Oh man, that sauce. That sauce. Is incredible. The patty is so crispy. It's juicy and crispy at the same time. Okay, if I were to go back to Burger Lords, that was everything I want in a burger, but it's vegetarian. This is everything I didn't know I wanted exactly. in a burger. Exactly. I don't think I've had a sauce like this before that is so rich and yet tantalizing? Yes, the sourness just makes you crave more. Yes, it does. <laughs> Jackson's like, keep talking while I eat the rest of this <laughs> burger. He's destroying our burger. <laughs> Is this what you thought an expensive burger would look like on Worth It? No, I thought it looked fancier. Most expensive burgers, like your episode with Keith, there was a lot of ingredients like foie gras and lobster. Uh huh. This one just has beef and cheese and a sauce. Mm. And it's so simple that you don't eat anything else. How is it? I can see why you'd use a fork and knife. <laughs> so how do you feel? Food coma. Food coma. <laughs> so now's the time. You know what time it is. Double cheeseburger dance time, go! <laughs> Double cheeseburger. Hey, oh! Before we get to our Worth It winners, what was your favorite thing today that wasn't a double cheeseburger? The dessert at Tess. Oh yeah. It's good. You just stole my answer. <laughs> my favorite thing today that wasn't a double cheeseburger was our co-star Jackson. Oh. Aww. And the fact that I didn't have to eat alone with Steven one more time. <laughs> I think we'll start with you today, Steven. Which double cheeseburger was most worth it to you at its given price? <sighs> Burgers never say die. The texture of the patty was what I try to accomplish when I add chips to my burgers. Crunchy, crispy, juicy. Hold oh, on, remind this back. You put potato chips on your cheeseburgers? Yeah, great double cheeseburger. But I gotta say, my worth it winner just barely goes to the Burger Lords. Oh, the vegetarian double cheeseburger. That redefined what a double cheeseburger could be. Next up, we got Andrew. I love all of these places. Burgers Never Say Die, probably the best straightforward cheeseburger I've ever had. Burger Lords, I think that's where I'd go if I wanted to hang out with people. Am I gonna say my worth it winner is Petit Toi? I think I am. When I think about it, I start salivating. I think it's the Bordelais sauce. Did you see that coming? No. <laughs> I thought he was gonna choose Burgers Never Say Die. Yeah, let me see Look, that. obviously they were all great burgers. Okay, before I say my worth it winner, how could you not pick the last one? I mean, you're the hype beast of food. <laughs> what? He's a very fancy boy, you know? A hot dog, you picked the high-priced one. Steak, high-priced. <laughs> wow. If you actually go back and tally the ones I picked the high-priced one, though, like, it's not that often. Sushi and burger. Okay, all right, I'm out of here. Jackson's knowledge of the show is coming back to haunt us. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you, buddy. <laughs> love you too, bro. 
All right, Jackson. Okay. No more beating around the bush. Who is your worth it winner? So the veggie burger, it was a new experience for me. I'm gonna start ordering veggie burgers, so Burger Lloyd's is my worth it winner. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> that was a good fake out. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Burgers never say die. Annie, who's your worth it winner? Burgers never say die. All right, we got a good mix here, but all we know for sure is that Andrew lost today. I did not lose. This has been quite the journey. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for flying all the way out here. It was worth it. What? Show name, watch out. <laughs> this worth it winner decision is gonna haunt me forever. So you wanna change it? I take it back, it's... Back for another episode of Worth It. And we're not just noodling around here, but we are covering noodles. Noodles. We've done many types of noodles in the past. Pasta, spaghetti, ramen. Today, we're focusing on non-Italian noodles in Los Angeles. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three delicious noodle dishes at three drastically different price points to find out which noodle is the most worth it at its price. Okay, so we're sticking specifically to Asian dishes. The first place we're going to, where are we going? We're going to Laoshire Noodle House to see Joe and Ellen, and we're having their wife's special noodle dish. Sweet, very, very sweet. Like, the story is sweet, like it's a it's It is a actually a sweet story. How did you come to start this business together? It's history. I can't find my favorite noodle in LA. It was different than what you were used to? Very different. Yeah. You want to keep the original style from my hometown, yeah. Shanxi province, northwest of China. I'm curious how many styles of noodle there are from your hometown. More than a thousand um, different. More than a thousand yeah. different styles? Yeah. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, the cat's ear noodle, mao du, also in my hometown would make a lot. Most of the time, when make it with lamb or beef soup. Actually, it's very similar like macaroni noodle. Knife cut noodle is a flat and a thick noodle. That noodle, we usually make stir fry. We are focusing on the wife's special noodle dish. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what is the story behind that dish? Introduce this to She's my wife. <laughs> 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 他是学钢琴的，然后呢，他给我当了一年的钢琴伴奏。后来呢，他叫我们几个同学上他们家吃饭，就给做了一个这面条，就觉得特别好吃。然后我当时就觉得，哎，这个取回家也不错啊，天天
Ratatouille. That's Ratatouille? I still haven't seen that movie. <laughs> Thousand types of noodles, approximately. <sighs> so comforting. Very, very good noodle dish. Before we go to our next noodle place, go to a place called Bistro Nas that does Beijing specialty desserts. Yes. And this place is recommended by our good friend Yidi. <laughs> Do you want to finish that before we... Yeah, this is the biggest Lazy Susan I've ever seen. Choo-choo! <laughs> okay, I said, Yidi, where should we get some desserts? And she said, you have to go to Bistro Nas. And why is that? They have food from my hometown, Beijing. I eat here a lot, cure my homesick. And their dessert is something I grew up eating, so I figure you guys should try it. Wow. Okay. Here you go. So this is how Yidi lives. I know exactly what I want, but I want to ask Yidi what we should eat. The donkey roll. The donkey roll? Yes. Okay. Do you want to start with a donkey roll? Mm, that's not the best one, Yidi. You're wrong. <laughs> I'm a sesame roll kind of guy. Mmm. 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 Before we enjoy the rest of these desserts, Let's enjoy a noodle fact. Noodle fact for your noodle. Oh wow, no aren't all facts noodle facts? Yeah. Because they improve your noodle. Yeah, I, no, I did that joke just now. The Chinese, generally speaking, don't dry their pasta, but Italians do. I have never made that distinction. For our spaghetti episode, mm -hmm. we saw spaghetti extruded, but they allowed it to dry before boiling, whereas at Laoshir, it extruded straight into the water. I think it's because it's not optimized for that al dente flavor that uh -huh. you get from drying. It explains so much of why I like Chinese noodles more than pasta. Yeah? Because they're just... Squishier? Squishier, yes. Mm. So for our next noodle stop, we're going to see Bugra at Dolan's Uyghur Cuisine, where we're gonna be trying their big plate chicken. Before we have that, we're gonna eat the rest of these desserts. Okay, so, um, cut the camera, let us go to town. I like it. Mm. What is Uyghur cuisine? The Uyghur region is located at the middle point of the Silk Road. It's influenced by the Persian, the Indian, Turkish, and Chinese. Many people ask, you guys have kebab and you guys have some wok dish. How do you invent this? But actually, this is original Uyghur food. Our chef, Arkin, is going to do all dishes today. What are the highlight dishes of Uyghur cuisine? In the ancient time, Uyghur people do kebab in the desert. So you make a fire and you make that tower, and its shape is like that fire. Polo is very traditional traditional braised rice and meats, and carrots, raisins together. Manta it looks like a Chinese dumpling, but bigger. The dough is very thin. It's stuffed with beef and onion and spices. So talking about the big plate chicken. chicken. So I imagine it's big. Yes, it's huge. I thought this was a noodle episode, Andrew. This is a noodle dish, right? Of course, yeah, it comes with noodle. This is like very typical uh, Chinese and vegan fusion. We fry the chicken with the oil and peppers and spices. Cinnamon, cumin, star anise, strand pepper. So this is spicy. We put the potato and we braise half an hour. We also make the handmade noodle. Noodle itself should be chewy. We make the noodle with water, salt, and egg whites. Egg whites in, in egg the whites, dough? Yeah, because it makes it really chewy. And it's thick noodle. This is the difference between big plate chicken noodle with the other noodle dish. Yeah, it should be thick and white. I noticed with the big plate chicken, all the noodles are covered by the things on top. Why are you trying to build this mountain of meat on top of the noodles? Because the big plate chicken, it has soup. So when you eat the noodle, mix it with the soup, it's like amazing taste. I've never seen a teacup like this before. All are handmade. Wow. Handmade? Yeah. Flower tea. This is very common in my country. This is also sort of my creation. Cheers. Mm. Don't Cheers. spill the tea. Mmm. Oh yeah. Ooh. Rose. Is there cinnamon in here? Yes. Cinnamon. Cardamom. Cardamom. Mm. You ready for some big plate chicken, Steven? Big plate chicken, here we go. My goodness. Mm. Okay, we got we got one noodle sticking out over here. Okay. Should we start with chicken since yeah. this is big plate chicken? Wow, that smells good. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little spicy. The taste yeah. that comes with it? Linger. There we go. A noodle. Oh, I want one of those kinds of noodles. That one's been sitting below the weight yeah. of the chicken. Got it, I got this it. It's delicious looking, right? Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh man. 
Whoa. The noodle itself is very dumpling-like. Dumpling-like. In, it, in its softness. It's like you're eating a yeah. dumpling in one noodle. It really is like a soup at the bottom. I know, why but do I, we have a spoon? I think it's because the noodle is your spoon. It's, oh, and I, <laughs> Sound and, and, of spoons. As we say that, thank you so much. See this peppercorn here? It's all going in. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Really? Okay, I need you to You gotta do it. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Focus in on the tongue. The heat builds a little bit. The numbing peppercorn is there that. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. The addition of cinnamon is really surprising and delightful. But it reminds me of Malaysian cuisine. A lot of the dishes there are literally marriages. There's no better description of this than a marriage of dishes. It's, it's delicious. I get it. I get why they say stop noodling around. Because uh, it takes a long time to eat a noodle. Is that it? Sometimes when you get out of a movie and you're like, I don't know what to say. Like when you finish a good book and you just need to like take a walk and do nothing. Or like one and a half hour drive across Los Angeles all the way to Beverly Hills. Cause that's where we're going next. But before that happens. Noodle fact. Historians believe that Chinese noodles originated more than X years ago. What is X? 1,500 years ago. Now double that and then add 1,000. 4,000 4, years, years ago. ago. I wonder what the first shape was. You Whoa. find that funny? I never thought of that before. <laughs> yeah, what was the first noodle shape? Oh, noodle, oh, noodle shape. shape. Yeah, me too. <laughs> China has been making bread longer than they've been making noodles, and noodle making stemmed from the ripping of dough into boiling water. Whoa! Whoa. Okay, going cross town. Making my way across town. Now headed to Crustacean, a landmark Vietnamese American spot. We're gonna be having An's famous garlic noodles. And on top of that, Dungeness Crab. The noodles are a creation of the founder of the restaurant, Lean An, and she's kept the recipe secret. So they are made in a secret kitchen and we can't go in there. We'll be speaking with Chef Tony. Maybe he can spill the beans on these noodles. That's okay. I mean, Oprah actually filmed here and she wasn't allowed in there. So uh, we're pretty much Oprah. <laughs> I understand that your kitchen operates somewhat in secret. Somewhat. Yeah. We have a kitchen within a kitchen. That kitchen's for family members and people that have worked in the restaurant for over 10 years. Why? My boss, Chef Helene An, she first started way back in the 70s in this little deli and slowly putting Asian flares here and there. She knew she was onto something, so she wanted to keep it within the family. We have about four items that come from Secret Kitchen only. The garlic noodles have been around since it's been open. She saw that everybody loved spaghetti and like Parmesan, so that was her inspiration. She was just named the mother of Asian fusion. This is the signature dish of the restaurant. Asian fusion has been looked at in a variety of ways. Where I grew up, it was looked down on. But you're doing Asian fusion and it's right here in Beverly Hills. How are you able to flip the narrative of an Asian fusion food? I think it was just something cool for people to, to hate on fusion, but the way I became very comfortable about it is when I spoke with Helene. She didn't really know what fusion was. She's like, I just cooking the way I want to cook. Now, if we're grabbing from different regions of the world, as long as you're doing it intelligently, the end result should be pretty tasty. And so this is our last stop in our video. It's the $3 signs. But the noodles themselves are not really the expensive thing here, right? Generally, if you're getting a crab, you're always getting a garlic noodle, but they're two separate items on the menu. I would say 99.9% .9 people that get the crab, they always get a noodle. To enjoy the noodles to their best. This is not a question. You have to get the crab. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Whoa. This smells like my fire alarm is about to go off. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It feels like something you shouldn't do at a restaurant this nice, but I do just want to go. <laughs> Caviar cheers. Oh man, that's so awesome. Actually, it makes a lot of sense. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, there's the hit of garlic. <laughs> it takes about two seconds. One crab in the shell and one crab picked out the shell. Nice. Wow. In bibs? No way. Yes. <laughs> This is way more simple than I thought. Right. Cheers. Oh yeah, it's really good. Huh. I just want to eat this whole bowl. Huh. It's so fluffy. A Squishy, fluffy noodle. Fluffy yeah. noodle. I'm gonna do a little bit of crab. Isn't this a life? Pre-picked crab. Mmm. Oh, yeah. It's really good, right? This is my fantasy 
as a kid of what a dish should taste like. This is so close to the buttered noodles you'd eat as a kid, right? Add on the best version of a buttery thing. Buttery crab meat. Pre-picked crab, okay, is like birds who get to eat food that's already been chewed up for them by their parents. Talking about when a mama bird chews up food and then throws it up into <laughs> the chickling's mouth. The idea of having food prepared for you. It's a mother's love, right? It's great. Now, how do you make it? That's the question. Long noodles, long life. Long day. That's what they say. One thing that was your favorite thing that was not a noodle today. The noodle extruder at Lauscher Noodle House. That was like a old fashioned manual train cart. At Crustacean, below the floor, there's a fish tank and there's a lot of beautiful koi fish living down there. Okay, Andrew, which noodle was the most worth it at its given price? I'll give a honorable mention to the cat's ear noodle from Lao Shur. My worth it winner is gonna go to Dolan's Uyghur cuisine. Oh my gosh. So good. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. We agree for once. I love crustacean. And I was gonna say Lao Shur because the vast experiences you get in one bowl. My worth it winner goes to Dolan's Uyghur cuisine. Adam, who is your worth it winner? Annie, who's your favorite noodle from today? And Yidi, while we're in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, that does it for episode two in our end of year mini series. Come back next week for a very crispy conclusion. It also has soft ends. Red chicken sandwich. Oh, come on, Adam. All right, Steven, this will be our final Worth It episode for 2019. Today on Worth It, we're gonna be trying three fried chicken sandwiches at three drastically different price points to find out which one is the most worth it at its price. I think we're experiencing at the moment a little bit of a fried chicken sandwich craze. We thought we'd investigate the issue and do fried chicken sandwiches ourselves. I like what you said, investigate. Oh, look at that fresh asphalt. <laughs> the way golden. you say words. <laughs> <laughs> it looks golden and delicious the way the fresh fried chicken does. Doesn't that look delicious? That looks tasty. What? So the first place we're heading to is the window at American Beauty. Chef Alicia is going to be showing us their fried chicken sandwich. American Beauty is a steakhouse, and during the day, they have a to-go window that does things like burgers, fries, fried chicken sandwiches, obviously. I like that a lot. It feels very New York. I don't know where I'm going with that. I just like yeah. it. I just like New York. What is the window? So the window is our daytime operation where we serve delicious food at a very affordable price. So I understand this chicken sandwich is under six bucks? Yeah, it's five dollars and fifty cents. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say we're competition with fast food, but we're trying to hit around the price point of the regular fast food chains. We're making everything in-house. The idea is to deliver hospitality to our guests, whether they order the fried chicken sandwich at the window or they're ordering our steaks at night. So we butterfly the chicken so it spreads out. You pound it so it's the same thickness around. I saw that you were also scoring the meat before you were pounding it. By scoring it, we're both helping the buttermilk and the seasoning penetrate, but also we're giving a little bit more surface space, so there's a little bit more crunchy parts. Then we just fry it. We have the awesome Martin's potato rolls, the jalapeno aioli, which gives a little bit more fat and some heat. And then we have this very simple slaw that gives a little freshness, just cabbage, some carrots, red onion, and a very simple red wine vinaigrette. Is that what you would say makes a perfect fried chicken sandwich? Is it the balance of all of those things together? For me, I think it's really a combination of it all. It's an evolution while you're eating it. And as it goes, it kind of all complements itself. And I think that really makes for a better and more enjoyable eating experience. That's our order. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that smells oh. amazing. Sorry, just uh, <laughs> that was a hard that. hit. There's something about food in a box like this that I just love every time. Mm -hmm. It's like the American bento box. <laughs> nice. You need ketchup with your fry? I do. Okay, hold on, I got you. All right. Well, that's a good fry. I mean, what? What? <laughs> You're lucky I don't dump this ketchup on your head. Do it, I dare you. Fries. Mmm, incredible fry. It's crunchy like cereal is crunchy. Okay, let's go sando time. Oh. Look at that. Whoa, it feels fluffier than I thought. That's that potato bun. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that man. was a, a really good first bite. Wow. 
Mmm. Oh, really good second bite. I have a feeling every bite is gonna be good. <laughs> what I'm realizing about this bun, it's so soft and fluffy that it is doing its job in like making the fried chicken the real star of the show. So this is the why are we having fried chicken as a sandwich question, you know? Because we've done fried chicken before, mm -hmm. but the bun just dials the whole thing back into like soft donut territory, mm -hmm. which I kind of like. You know what this does kind of remind me? Tell me. I think you're gonna be mad that you didn't think of this. No, I think it's gonna be less exciting than I thought. The Peking duck bun that we had in New York, <laughs> that soft, squishy bun with a delicious meat and condiment and crispy vegetable, plus the cucumber and the yeah, sauce that adds like yeah. a little sweetness. You're right, okay, I, I, I you, yeah. yeah. American Beauty, what a beautiful <laughs> time in America. That's too easy for you, I, I'm disappointed. Okay, so before our next proper fried chicken sandwich, we're actually gonna have a bonus piece of fried chicken. Friend of the show, David Chang, has a number of fried chicken sandwich shops called Fuku. They have an off-menu, mega spicy fried chicken designed to taste better as a cold product. It's like a food pun, but in the language of flavor and temperature. It sounds more like an oxymoron. It's like a fun- And you'd have to be an oxymoron to eat this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what's terrifying? Black gloves that come with your food. Here it is. Oh, Ooh. put your gloves on. <laughs> this guy's walking his dog and he's just looking at three guys putting on <laughs> black gloves. Oh my God. It what? looks upsetting. Why? Oh. It looks like mummified meat. Why is it so dark? <laughs> Adam, I wish you had that bottle of ranch on standby. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I thought we were just dipping. <laughs> Adam! This is so bizarre. Like... Oh, it's cold. <laughs> Cheers! Oh, it's not too bad. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like cinnamon sugary, too. Oh. Oh! It's bad. There's pickles that you can have alongside. Ah, <laughs> no. I don't like this. Give me that fact! Okay, hot, cold, fried chicken fact time. Mmm. Well, that's good. An ice slush drink. It's making it worse. Can you say hot, cold, fat chicken time? Hot, cold, fat chicken time. <laughs> oh, wow. The chemical in spicy foods that makes something spicy is capsaicin. Capsaicin is known to increase energy, reduce appetite, increase salvation, and release endorphins. <laughs> Ability to taste reduces in higher temperatures above 86 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as lower temperatures below 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh. I think this chicken might be right in the center. You're still going? <laughs> oh my goodness. So we're on our way downtown to Pico Nico. We're gonna see Chef Kaniko and have her fried chicken sandwich. Okay. Is it spicy? No, it's okay. Okay, good. Yeah. Pikuniko means picnic plus kuniko. So everything is in to-go box and you can eat outside of the restaurant like a picnic. Why did you choose fried chicken as the cornerstone of the menu? I grew up with it. My grandma never liked cooking, so we always go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> when I came here, I ate this southern style fried chicken with thick, thick crust and I loved it. So I did a hybrid, light as Japanese, but also crunchiness. Normally it's a wheat flour, but we do brown rice and potato starch. That's maybe the most special part of our fried chicken. Our fryer don't carry any gluten. A lot of my friends' kids, they have a serious allergy and they never eaten fried chicken. So I said, okay, you can come here. Why did you want to offer a sandwich option for your fried chicken? Uh, I'm trying to belong here. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever find those in Japan? I don't believe it's a popular thing. Japanese just pack rice ball and and fried chicken and pickles, and that's our picnic. But a lot of people said, Kuni, come on, like you live in the United States, like everybody loves sandwich, come up with a great one. I wanted to make the sandwich as special as I could. We created a golden bun, which carries turmeric. The turmeric is like anti-inflammatory, so you can lessen your feeling of I'm eating fried chicken today. <laughs> to me, sandwich is about combination. The soft bun, crunchy chicken, acid, it from lemon vinaigrette. I wanted to have everything in one bite. I mean, you say one bite, but I've seen the sandwich and it's oh. quite tall. Yes. How do I eat that with one bite? Smash 
<laughs> We've come for the sandwiches, but we also got a salad mm. that we're gonna try first. I like my seaweed and cucumber salad. Our seaweed is from Japan and it's salt cured. The texture is not like dehydrated, like wakame, like a paper thing. It's very meaty and satisfying. I eat my salads every day. Cheers. Mmm. Wow. I'm not sure I've ever had this type of seaweed before. It is denser and meatier. Pause button. Back to the sandwich. She gave us good advice to smush. Oh. Look at how juicy the chicken is. Yeah, Do you look see at the, the juices coming out? It's the hidden benefit of the squish. Oh. Cheers. That's awesome. Wow. It's a face wiper for sure. It's a very good sandwich. Dude, the star of this fried chicken sandwich? Say it on three. One, two, three. The, the bread. Oh, defend your case, because I think you're wrong. It's the sourness that makes you want all the other stuff. True, but come on, look at this bread. It's squishy, has a nice bite, it's not falling apart. It's a beautiful sandwich. The texture of this stuff, almost like moss-like. You ever look at moss and think, I bet that's tasty. <laughs> I never think that. Really? I no. think it'd be a cool texture to eat. It's like a hanging garden. It's like that plant up there. I think this makes like potentially the perfect sandwich. You got this fried chicken that's delicious, but then the things around it so that you're not feeling like yeah. greasy. It's not no. greasy at all. It's fried chicken on this side, right? And yeah. So she's like, okay, what do I put on this side to, to balance it out? Sprouts, miso jam, pickles. Oh, a little too far? Oh, okay. Jalapenos on this side, boom. Mm. I feel like we said some good stuff. But Ooh. Dirty move, Adam. It's a dirty, dirty move. <laughs> Are you eating the one that you didn't already steal a piece of chicken out of? <laughs> I see. I know how you work. Picanico, what do you think? The bread. It's so good. Ooh, I feel like a picnic. Does that make any sense? <laughs> no. Before we go to our next spot, fried chicken sandwich spec time. Fried chicken sandwich spec. Though it's not currently on the menu, for a time, KFC offered the double down sandwich. <sighs> I remember that one. <laughs> Which consisted of two fried chicken fillets doubling as the bun. And the filling was bacon, cheese, and sauce. I actually have a very fond memory of this. You actually ate this thing. I tried it. It was as amazing as it sounds. Really? I remember that thing. That was madness. It's like, just eat food, guys. <laughs> what are you doing? Isn't it even a sandwich at that point, or are you just picking up food? Like, if I just pick up a steak <laughs> and eat it with my hand, is that a sandwich? <laughs> we started this video at a steakhouse. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to a seafood restaurant. Oh, okay. We're on our way to Son of a Gun, where Chef Greg is going to show us their fried chicken sandwich and probably a couple other seafood treats. Is this modeled after a certain style or like genre of seafood? Definitely, John and Vinny, the owners, are from Florida. The vibe of it is a Florida fish shack. I wonder why you put a fried chicken sandwich on a menu of a seafood restaurant. Well, our menu is really diverse, which is like the way we like to eat. Living in Los Angeles, you have so much diversity. There's amazing food in Koreatown, amazing Chinese food in San Gabriel. You name it, we got it here. So this is what influences our menu. We're not an Italian restaurant, we're not a French restaurant. We just take something that we're into at the time and try to develop a dish. The tuna dish, for example. Exactly, yeah. That tuna dish is influenced by Peruvian cuisine. First, we take market avocado, red onion, cilantro, and some tortilla chips. Mix all that together, and then the tuna has been pounded out into carpaccio, so it makes the texture of the fish really nice. So that gets wrapped around the avocado mix. And then the bottom of the bowl is a leche de tigre, so you eat it with a spoon and get a little bit of the tuna, the avocado, tortilla chips, all together. Oh. Wow. Thank you. This is delightful. This reminds me of our time at Pacific Seas. Remember that? I don't exist in this bar as you know me. We've shared like one donut. Wait, whoa. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. These are the coolest straws I've ever seen. This is a drink you don't have to cheers. Because how would you? Like this. <laughs> I'm concerned because I taste no alcohol in there, but I definitely feel alcohol <laughs> in here. All right, oyster time? Mm. Yeah. Minion at me. And then you want a horseradish or are you good? Yeah. Cheers. Oh! Mm, hell yeah. Okay, turn oh it God. up. I think oysters are the most Disney princess food. It's like a spoon made of an ocean fish. And so it makes me feel like I'm in a Little Mermaid. 
You get what I mean? No, I'm not, I'm not picking up what you're laying down. People are shaking their heads, but those people haven't been having scorpion balls. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. This is the wildest looking thing I've ever seen. It looks like a whole brain on a plate. Whoa. Wow. God damn it, that's mm. good. Oh my God, that's good. Look at how much avocado is in this. And this juice at the bottom is like spicy orange juice. This tastes more of a cocktail than this. Yeah. Hold up. No, Steven, you're a madman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have asked if we could make a cocktail out of the Lexington Tigre. Like, I was saying it tastes more like a cocktail than the scorpion I said bowl that, does. not you. We take a free range chicken breast, brined overnight in some lemon and herbs, bread it uh, with a three step breading process, seasoned flour into buttermilk, and then we make crumbs out of the uh, flour and the buttermilk so it gives it a little bit of a crispy texture when we fry the chicken. And let it rest, let the juices reabsorb, and, and then we use a red rooster aioli, which is red rooster hot sauce from Louisiana. It's not sriracha, it's more like Tabasco. And then we uh, make a slaw with a uh, market vegetable we make some bread and butter pickles in-house here. So we'll make the dressing for the cabbage slaw from the vinegar that comes from the pickles. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, that's actually not at all what I expected to see. There's pickles embedded into the slaw. It's my kind of slaw. Have you ever seen a more beautiful chicken sandwich? Commercial perfect. Okay, I'm gonna split it for us. You're gonna love the feel of this bun, I can already tell. Yeah? Yeah, you're a big bun guy. Oh. These dishes are actually very similar. There's like the fattiness and the acidity. Yeah. Fattiness, acidity. Fattiness, Oyster. acidity. Fattiness, acidity. Fattiness, acidity. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you're gonna set me up like that. I'm gonna dunk hard. How's that for a sports <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Steven. <laughs> oh, mm. mm, no. You know you had a good time when the sandwich is in shambles. What do you think about the uh, the texture of the fried crust? It sounds like you want to talk about the texture of the fried crust, Andrew. Yeah. You know how there's different levels of crunch? A crunchier crunch would be like leaves, high pitch crackle. Then there's also lower pitch crackle, like stepping into snow. I think this is more like snow crackle. The other chicken we've had is more like leaf crackle. I want to spend a day. I want to spend a day in your head. Just like, what are you thinking? All right, Steven. We did it again. Not only did we have three fried chicken sandwiches, but this also concludes a three episode set for us. The first one had buns, the last one had buns. In effect, it was a sandwich of its own. What was your favorite thing in this episode that was not a fried chicken sandwich? The giant ropes that held the hanging light bulbs at Piku Nico. Mm, yes. We don't often get to talk about restaurant decor. I kind of have a similar favorite thing that wasn't a fried chicken sandwich. Uh -huh. The bathroom faucets at American Beauty. It looked like a swan throwing up the water into your hands. All right, which fried chicken sandwich was the most worth it at its given price? My worth it winner goes to the window at American Beauty. That fried chicken sandwich which is everything I wanted on a Martin's potato roll, which is near and dear to my heart. You're not often wrong on the show, but you're wrong today. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> My worth it winner goes to Bigunico. That fried chicken sandwich was so smushable. Yeah, the smushing today was pretty excellent. Adam, who's your worth it winner? Adam picks Bigunico, a good peak. Gunico. Gunico. And that's gonna be it for 2019. Thanks to everybody who works on this show to make it happen. Most of them are not here. And thank you all for watching. Yeah. We appreciate it. We'll be back. If you want to suggest a food, we do check our Instagram page, instagram.com slash buzzfeedworthit. And the comments of this video. Comments of this video. We're probably reading them right now as you're watching this. I am also watching. Oh yeah, what did we learn about fried chicken? Delicious. Well, fried chicken sandwiches may continue to be eaten the world round. <laughs> At least we'll know that they taste good. <laughs> Solved. <laughs> <laughs>